Welcome to Physics Hub. Before starting today's set video, I would like to inform you that we have uploaded few books on our website www.physicshub.in. You can go there and download the PDFs of those books. Well, today is 2nd June 2019 Sunday and here I am with a new set video. So as you know that we upload, we upload a set video on every Sunday and it usually consists of 10 solved problems from different topics of physics. We generally upload the question paper on our Facebook page little earlier so that you can try to solve the questions and match your answers whenever the solutions are uploaded. You can download the PDF version of this question paper from our website www.physicshub.in. Now one thing, whenever we upload a video, we distribute it into different relatable playlists. So go through the playlist and you will be able to get videos as per your choice. And keep a track of our community post as well, it will help you to make your base of physics strong. Now without any further delay, let's start today's set video. So this is set, thir set 35 and this set contains questions from classical mechanics, electromagnetic theory, mathematical methods, quantum mechanics, solid state physics and atomic and molecular physics. So the first question reads, an infinitely long straight wire carrying current I1 passes through the center of a circular loop of wire carrying current I2 as shown in the figure. The long wire is perpendicular to the loop. Which of the following describes the magnetic force on the loop? Okay, so the loop exactly lies, this loop, this circular loop, exactly lies in the magnetic field of the long wire. Thus, at every point of this loop, the magnetic field due to the wire is parallel to the direction of the current I2. So it is basically tangential. Therefore, if magnetic is I2 uh, integration over uh, dl cross b. Now dl and b has the same direction, basically they are parallel. So the angle between them is 0, so cos product of them will be 0. Therefore, the magnetic force acting on this loop by this is 0. So option 4, option d is the correct option. Moving to question number 2, a dynamical system with two generalized coordinates q1 and q2 has a Lagrangian this. If p1 and p2 are the corresponding generalized momenta, the Hamiltonian is given by. So this is the Lagrangian and from, like, from the Lagrangian what informations we can extract. So we can uh, find out p1 and p2 by differentiating Lagrangian with respect to q1 dot and q2 dot and from p1 p2 um, we can write them in terms of q1 dot and q2 dot because ultimately we have to find out the Hamiltonian which is not a function of q1 dot and q2 dot that's why we need to replace that and uh, Hamiltonian is a function of q and p and that is basically pjqj dot minus l so p1 q1 dot plus p2 q2 dot minus l l is this so this now we uh, a Hamiltonian cannot be a function of this q dot so we have to replace these q dots uh, from these two expressions and once we replace that we get uh, this expression p1 square plus p2 square by 4 so this is the Hamiltonian and it is matching with option C so option C is the correct option moving to question number 3 a state of a system is given by this where n equals to 1 2 3 dot 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 n if operator A is defined as this then the expectation value of A is given by so this is the formula for expectation value psi psi by psi psi so first we will calculate asi then we will just take uh, take care of this thing so asi means a in, uh, operating on phi n so n a naught okay so i have shown you so from asi one root n will come and when you will take care we will you will take care of this term this bra psi another root n will come so that's a root n whole square and this is phi n a phi n okay now a phi n is n a naught a phi, phi n so that is equals to n or n a naught and phi n phi n equals to 1 and this term is equals to 1 and uh, <coughs> n square so average uh, is over n square so n square uh, sum of n square from n equals to 1 to n so that is the formula n into n plus 1 into 10 plus 1 by 6 and average of n so sum of natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2 so after simplifying these things you get 10 plus 1 by 3 into n naught and it is matching with option c so option c is the correct option moving to question number 4 the line integral a to b f dot dl 
where a figures to this along the semicircular path as shown in the figure is. So for the semicircular path this basically this is a half circle so it will follow the equation of a circle x square plus a square equals to 1. So if you take derivative then you will get x dx plus y dx equals to 0. Therefore f dot dl equals to this term into dx because dl equals to dx x cap plus dy y cap. So f dot dl will become this. Now what we are doing we are taking x y by root over x square plus y square common. So in the parenthesis it will uh, remain x dx plus y dy. That's we got from here is equals to zero. So the integrand is zero means the integration will be zero. So and basically the correct option is option A. So option A is the correct option. Moving to question number five, the wave function of a system is shown in the figure. So from minus three to A it has value C. The average value of X is so the formula for averaging is this minus this limit minus 3a to a psi star x psi dx divided by minus 3a to a psi star psi dx okay so psi star x psi dx equals to root over uh, mod c square x dx divided by mod c square dx okay because it has the value c over this interval interval minus 3a to plus a so average of x becomes after some calculation minus a and it is matching with option b so option b is the correct option Moving to question number 6, let x and p denote respectively the coordinate and momentum operator satisfying the canonical commutation relation xp equals to i in natural units h cat equals to 1. Then the commutator xp sin p is. Okay, so this is the thing we are given. So xp sin p equals to xp sin p plus p x sin p. Now xp equals to i, so i sin p and uh, we have just expanded the sin p in terms of this p minus p cube by 3 factorial plus p to the 5 by 5 factorial minus dot 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 and uh, done simplified we have just separated it these things x p then minus x p cube by 3 and the next term will come plus x p to the 5 by 5 so x p goes to i and this there is a formula x p cube equals to uh, n i h cut and uh, p to the power n minus 1 so we have 3 n equals to 3 so 3 minus 1 is 2 so 3 i p square by 3 factorial 3 factorial is a constant term so that will come outside similarly we can find out for the third term this thing and uh, we see that after uh, doing some simple calculation we see that we are getting formula of uh, cos p so after taking i common i sin p plus p cos p and it is matching with option a I have written two formulas which have been used here sin x and cos x so it will help you to understand better uh, question number 7 the wave function of a particle is given by this where psi 0 and psi 1 are the normalized eigenfunction with energy e0 and 2 e0 corresponding to the ground state and first excited state respectively if delta e is the error measurement error of measurement of the Hamiltonian in this state psi then the value of delta e is okay so psi is given so we are finding this psi which will be used in the upcoming calculations so average of h equals to psi is say by psi psi and uh, h operating on psi naught phi naught will produce e0 phi naught because these are two eigenvalues on with energy this these are two eigenstate and these are the eigenvalues so we can write these eigenvalue equations and from here we can write h of psi h operating on psi is 1 by root 2 h psi naught phi naught plus h plus i into h operating on phi 1 now h uh, operating on phi naught is e naught phi naught ok and h operating on phi 1 equals to twice e naught so that's why we have done this and um, we have calculated these things using this ok and psi psi is 3 by 2 so we have placed 3 by 2 here and we found that average of h is 5 by 3 e naught similarly we have to find out uh, average of h square and uh, average of h square we are getting 3 e naught square ok so here I have uh, shown average of h square but somehow it has got uh, removed I am sorry for that but uh, what you can do you can operate h over this so h will operate on psi naught and phi naught and phi 1 and it will produce this thing 
and that will help you to calculate h average of h square and it will come out to be 3 e naught square and therefore the error in measurement delta e equals to root over e square average minus e average square and that is equals to root 2 by 3 e naught and it is matching with option a so option a is the correct option question number 8 if equation of motion of holes in balance band is described as this then the equation of motion of electron in conduction band in region as so equation of motion of holes in balance band is this now electrons and holes are linked through the following relations kh equals to minus ke and bh equals to be equation of motion of electrons in conduction band is given by so we have just placed kh replay we have replaced kh by minus ke and bh by b and uh, we are getting this so uh, it will be he sorry for the mistake so minus sign will come here and it is matching with option a so option a is the correct option moving to question number nine find the mag minimum magnetic field needed for the g-man effect to be observed in a spectral line of 400 nanometer wavelength when a spectrometer whose resolution is 0 0.010 nanometer is used so lambda equals to c by nu means nu equals to c by lambda means d nu equals to minus c by lambda so d lambda taking mod we are getting this now delta nu means the separation g man splitting is you know, we know that it is equals to eb by 4 pi m where these symbols have their special meaning so b equals to 4 pi m c by e delta lambda by lambda square now everything we know 4 pi m c e lambda delta lambda is given 0 0.010 0 nanometer so we have just uh, placed the value replace the values and you got 1.34 tesla and it is matching with option c option c is the correct option moving to our last question assuming the lattice points of a body center cubic crystal of lattice parameter a are occupied by spherical atoms of radius rl the free volume per unit cell is okay so this is the bcc structure so we know that uh, one atom another atom another atom and here an atom and one atom at the body center yes and another atoms are at the, the corners so volume of the unit cell if this uh, uh, lattice parameter is a volume of the unit cell will be a cube effective number of atoms these eight corner atoms are shared by eight atoms so the contribution is one by eight into eight and uh, one full atom is contributing so plus one so it's basically two effective number of atoms so volume occupied by these atoms is two into four third pi r cube r, r, r is given to be rl radius so this spherical atoms rl so now for body centered uh, bcc crystal we know that this is the case so a a will give you root 2 and root 2a a will give you root 3a and this is rl this is 2 rl this is rl as i have shown here so it's basically 4 rl so 4 rl equals to root 3a means rl equals to root 3 by 4a so rl is unknown here we have to replace RL by this thing. So once we replace that, we get the volume occupied by these atoms, these uh, atoms, corner atoms, are as well as these body center atoms. Sorry, atom. So this is the volume occupied by the atoms. So therefore, the free volume per unit cell is total volume minus this atom volume occupied by these atoms. So a cube minus this, and it is equals to a cube into one minus root three pi by eight, and it is matching with option D. So option D is the correct option and this is the end so I have tried my best to provide the solutions in great detail irrespective of this if you have any doubts confusions or queries you can now comment down below I will try my best to clarify them all and any kind of suggestions are always welcome so this is all for today guys if you have if you find this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and if you are a new visitor of this channel Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Keep sharing, keep laughing and keep exploring the wonders of physics. And finally, thanks for watching.